Hey, you wanna know what's better than a giant fireball coming from the sky? Do you wanna know what's better than a giant fireball bouncing along the ground? Both at the goddamn same time. Hello, my fellow sorcerers. Welcome one, welcome all to the final fiery frontier. You have been asking for the balls of fire, and I'm here to present you those balls. I should have phrased that differently now that I think about it, but the point is, this is not just wonderful, it's actually performed so much better than I expected. New Meteor with a new unique is phenomenal and, in my view, tied with the best Sorcerer build. But, Fireball has just kind of been there waiting for its moment, and its moment has come. Because outside of the Fireballs themselves, absolutely annihilate one-shotting everything, except bosses, of course, you have actually an incredible meteor generator via fireball's natural high lucky hit chance and the new unique meteor helm coupled with the meteor enchantment you see every bounce of fireball on every enemy it hits is a chance to call down a meteor so we can reach a point that despite having a bajillion crit chance and damage, we also have a bajillion lucky hit, which means every bounce of fireball is like a 5% chance to call down a meteor, which doesn't sound a lot, but think about how many bounces of fireballs you're pumping out with nearly capped attack speed, which this build also has. So you have this endless line of fireballs just bum, 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 marching along, and every single time they land, well, you are more than likely going to get meteors accompanying them, and it's just this incredible synergistic chorus of flame. I absolutely adore it, and I really can't get over not just how quickly it annihilated Uber Lilith, which is really quite impressive, like this is Blizzard Ice Spike's pure meteor level, but how good it feels in dungeons, in overworld content, etc. You just launch the fireball, and then it just bounces forward through the corridor into the next room, killing everything it touches, summoning meteors as it goes. It's a really safe build. Not only do we have the extra meteor cooldown now, so every Every time we press Meteor, it is a barrier. We are killing things, well, in one-shot fashion from range safely while dancing around them, and it's quite ridiculous. I mean, you're seeing this tier 90 plus, I don't have a defensive aspect on here. I don't have a defensive piece of gear on here, and yet I feel tankier than I do in builds that do use defensive aspects and affixes. It's really quite exceptional, and I am very proud of this creation. We also have infinite mana despite not using the infinite mana inferno ultimate we don't need it we don't have space for it we have better uses for buttons on our bars granted the way we have infinite mana might not be exactly intended but hey let's take advantage of it while we can and i can't wait to share it with you you see just how much meteor ridge and fireball ridge is going off here and then we never run out of mana and i'm not doing anything to help that I'm just stood here spamming Meteor. Is that not one hell of a sight to behold? I think we might actually have a sleeper gauntlet contender hit here, and that's really exciting. So this then is essentially a fireball build that has bonus Meteor. Don't think of it of a Meteor build with fireball. It's not that way round, and this way it really works. So without further ado, let's get into it. The usual skill tree starts awaits us then with the usual two points in Firebolt and the usual uh, slotting of it into our first enchantment slot. As boring as it sometimes can be, the damage that you get from burning just cannot be argued. And while Meteor, yes, leaves a ground burn, it's not enough to carry what we need the burning to do. Outside of, you know, all of the burning synergy, this will be running X-Files, which adds so much damage because Meteor and Fireball together add so many stacks of Fireball. Every bounce of the fireball is another stack of firebolt, is another chance for a X-Files proc to happen, 
is more ridiculous fire explosions multiplied up by all of your crit chance and damage, and it just gets silly. So, yeah, it really is perfect for this, and given that Fireball doesn't naturally apply a burn, it is very needed. Talking of Fireball, then, whack all the points you can into it, and then we want to take it to Enhanced for all that bigger size, and it's nice that it's just unconditional now, and then Destructive for the extra critical hit damage. Then we grab ourselves Devastation just to get the full elemental dominance, affecting both uh, the Fireball and the Meteor, and then we go over to your defensives, where we'll get the usual attunement so they can all reset, get the usual duo of Flame Shield up to Shimmering, and Teleport up to Shimmering. While we will be running Raiment on easier content in this build, the Teleport here is really for the mobility and uh, the triggering of your Tibalts more than it is for group stunning, but hey, I don't need to sell you on Teleport and Flame Shield, they're just the two best defenses in the game, and I will die on that hill. Actually, no, I won't die on that hill, because these are the two defensives that you want out of all the others in the game. Anyway, get your glass cannon, it's free damage, nothing is hard enough to make you worry about the extra damage coming in, so that's nice. And then we get ice armor with the little bit of mana, though this isn't strictly necessary, you could respend this point, but the health and survivability that this gives really cannot be understated, and it really pushes this build over the edge and lets you run it without any defensive aspects or pieces of gear. Then we go over to the Conjuration section for the double defensives of Protection and Mana Shield. Protection is phenomenal with the new Meteor Unique Helm, because every time we cast a Meteor, we get this 30% barrier, which means we really are always barriered, which is where we are essentially unkillable, so phenomenal. Get your lucky hit, because we want all of the Meteor procs to happen, that's nice. And then Ice Blades is literally just here for the cold damage to uh, track our Tal Rashes to three stacks and get that extra 15% multiplicative. Technically, you could take this out and, I don't know, put it in something like Deep Freeze if you wanted for your cold damage and then technically have an ultimate, but it's just a lot more unwieldy, isn't it? In any case, over to our Mastery then, where we fill up Meteor and give it the second enchantment slot and take it to Enhanced and then Wizards. Now, technically, you can get away with Mages here because we will have Crippling Flames, High Lucky Hit, and a lot of Fireballs, so it's probably not strictly needed, but the extra consistency on triggering the immobilized part of Devouring Blaze is nice to have. And um, talking of that, get all three of your fiery passives, the extra 9% multiplicative, get your Devouring Blaze for all of that sweet crit damage, and yes, we want our bouncing fireballs to uh, cripple immobilize, give us that buff to Devouring Blaze, and it just stops enemies coming towards us, which is really nice too. Then uh, to the ultimates, where we get our little cheeky mana secret. So, we don't have enough space for reliable chill application to go the Hawfrost route in this build, but we're still going perma then Hawfrost to get to Frigid Breeze. Now, cold damage against vulnerable enemies restores mana. You might think, what? We're doing, like, all fire damage. Well, the thing is, this passive is just a little bit broken in that it works on any type of damage, not just cold damage. So all of these bouncing fireballs hitting all of the enemies that are always vulnerable thanks to the Seneschal, yeah, it's giving you loads of mana, which is why we have infinite mana without having to play, like, Flicker Step and Supreme Inferno. It's really good, and eventually I'm sure it'll get fixed, but hey, it's been like this for multiple seasons, so maybe not. In any case, this is phenomenal, and it essentially solves all your mana problems by itself here. Then, for our key passive, the only choice, of course, is S's Ferocity, the attack speed from the aspect, but also the critical strike damage and chance is wonderful for both Meteor, Fireball, and the X-Files procs. So, that is our skill tree done. Next up, then, is your gear, and I warn you now, this is a unique heavy one. Your gems want to be a quick damage to vulnerable in your weapons, you want armor in your jewelry, and health in your armor. So let's start with uh, them uniques this time around. We've got Esu's Heirloom. We're not playing off Supreme Inferno, so we don't need Flicker Step for having that constantly up. We have mana aplenty, so we can enjoy uh, the critical strike chance and damage of Esu's, which is really nice for a crit damage based build, of course. Then we have Tibalt's. The mana is nice, 
nice, but as we've seen, we don't strictly need it, but it does help smooth out the curve, and uh, we get that huge damage increase every time we fire shield, every time we teleport. It is just so good. Then, the required gloves of the Illuminator, the thing that, you know, makes the fireballs bounce as they do, and uh, powers them up a lot because of it, letting each hit multiple times. You want to, of course, get to the best version of this you can. Over to Raymond on uh, the chest, which is just nice to have. It's more damage in general, and the group teleport stun is obviously also nice to have. And then the other required Starfall Coronet, the new Meteor Unique. Make sure you get one with as lower a cooldown as possible. That's the most important by far of this, but then you also really ideally want that lucky hit chance on the higher side, as it's a huge amount of lucky hit chance. In any case, over to the rings, where we have Tal Rashes. This is, as always, just wonderful. 45% multiplicative, more damage, and the best affixes you could ask for. Then, x Files. We are applying so many stacks of fire damage dots. This blows up constantly, and it blows up for millions constantly. It is glorious, and while technically if you get Starless Skies, the Uber Unique, you do want to replace X-Files with it, and then uh, slightly adjust to not need as much lucky hit. It's not actually a huge increase, all things considered, because X-Files is just that good here. Over to, uh, then, the three aspects, as we only have room for three, which is, incidentally, why we're not running the Staff of Endless Ray. While it's a very good item, the extra damage on the third fireball is huge, and the affixes are fairly nice, it doesn't synergize well enough with what we're doing here, which is A, hybriding it with Meteor, and B, going all in on that lucky hit crit chance combo. This means we have to drop Wand and Focus two legendary aspects, which means we only have one aspect space left on the neck, and we need more than that. It is just a huge damage loss to take this, despite how objective cool it is as both an item and its function. So, on your wand, and you do want to make sure to have a wand for the lucky hit, we won't be close to enemies often enough for a dagger to be better, and we just want more meteors to spawn, so make sure you wand it up, and on said wand we want conceited, we're going to be buried all the time, especially with meteor giving us said barrier, and uh, that gives us a lot of damage constantly. Then, the two main ones, we have ancient flame, so we are spamming out those fireballs 50% faster, which is fantastic, and then three curses for that up to 60% multiplicative crit damage on both Meteor and Fireball, which we're both using, casting, dropping, so this really is double dipped to its maximum potential. Affix-wise, then, on at least the three that we can control, you want uh, your following. Crit chance, crit damage, cooldown reduction, lucky hit chance, resource generation, ranks of devouring blaze, mastery, and uh, then your general damage, like intelligence, close, burning, vulnerable, etc. Lastly, I just want to touch on the defensive side of things. If you are finding yourself too squishy or struggling to survive, etc., then you want to replace either Raiment with a defensive chest or Tibalts with defensive legs. Something with either Juggernauts or Disobedience on it and generally defensive aspects. That said, I would recommend going for the chest as Raiment is the least important and useful of the trio that can have defensive aspects here, so a nice defensive chest with defensive aspects, yeah, go for that. Over to then the Seneschal, where we have Kind of the usual, honestly, because it's sort of just the best for nearly every build ever. In any case, flash of adrenaline with your tactical and duration, so it's permanently up, and then Genesis if you've got it to turn it into a permanent 50% multiplicative instead of 20. If not, put whatever you would like in this uh, space. Over on the right side, Tempest for easy, constant ranged application, so all of these tunings are permanently active. We want efficiency for that 15% crit chance. This is a crit build, so this is great. We want breaking as our source of consistent, reliable, vulnerable to both help our mana and, you know, do much more damage, as we don't really have another way to keep this up in the rest of the build. This does a lot for you. And then Evernight for the permanent plus four to all your skills, getting a plus four to both 
Meteor and Fireball is a huge damage increase. So, yeah, this really is good here. If you don't have it, then you can indeed use whatever you would like. Maybe actually Frigid Support and then go into Hawfrost to make up some of the damage. So... Let's talk how to play it. When against a boss, the answer is mostly just spam. Get your Ice Blades on cooldown, just be consistently Fireball, using your Meteors on cooldown, teleporting, and then Flame Shielding alternatively every couple seconds to keep up your Tibalt's buff, and that's pretty much it. Ice Armor as you need it, and you uh, just sort of want to pile everything on its face as fast as possible. Against sort of random groups of normal enemies going through through a dungeon, it's a little bit more nuanced in that you do just want to kind of move along, throw your fireball in their direction, and generally stay at range of them. Teleport away from them, and uh, keep your distance, and just let the bouncing do its work as you go through. You see a corridor entrance, put a fireball down it, everything over in that room is now dead, and you can move on with your life. The teleport is purely for speed and repositioning to play around the enemies, the fire shield for if you get in trouble, because you don't really need the Tibalt's extra damage, even in a tier 100 and then the main thing is your Meteor. You don't really want to or need to use it offensively in the overworld or when you're doing high Nightmare Vault slash dungeons. Meteor in that case is mainly just the extra barrier from protection. You will get enough Meteors from your bouncing, but more than anything, your bouncing fireballs are enough to one-shot everything anyway. You don't need to wait for a Meteor to land. So just fireball and then use Meteor as a defensive against any Anything other than perhaps a huge pack of elites, and you will be golden. Let's then bring it home with Paragon. From the first board, because where else would we start? Follow me point for point as usual. Head up and left, get your resilience for that all resist, and then we go right through Elementalist, up through this intelligence to Elementalist. 15% more multiplicative, what more could you ask for? Grab Erudite for again more all resist, and so it's powered up by said Elementalist, and then head up through Elemental Balance into the next board, which is, as usual, Enchantment Master. Here, we want to hit the Elemental Balance, Elementalist, and Ruinous nodes in the manner that I have done, and then get this entire cluster up to the right of the Glyph with Erudite, and the Glyph indeed is reinforced. We are always barriered, especially in a new Meteor Unique build, so this is some much needed damage reduction, and it does power up these two nodes, which we really want. Over in to the next board, which is going to be your Burning Instinct board. Obviously, things will always be burning, so so this really is great, and part of the reason we are Firebolt Enchanting. Over to the Glyph straight away like this, and Destruction goes here. This is the big one, we are doing all of our damage with Fiery Crits, get every single bit of Dexterity in range of this Glyph, amp it up as much as you can, while also grabbing Cinders and Smoldering Embers. Then you want to head up and get yourself Kindling, and then finally go up to this Intelligence here and just grab safeguard for that elite reduction and a little bit extra armor, especially if you're playing the no defensive piece of gear version of this build. Then leave it there for now as going up here is the last thing we will do. So initially head down and right through this dexterity in to the following, your lovely searing heat. Now we want to make sure that the direct damage bonus is at the maximum 30% multiplicative, so make sure you do get all of the nodes we do get. Each of these 5% fire damage does power it up, and they're all here for a reason. In any case, arrange it so the glyph is in the top right, and then head over straight to Flame Touched, and then straight down to the glyph slot where Adept will go. Enough meteors come down that this is worthwhile, get them extra big, and of course we cast them too. Why would we not activate it with your ashes? And then for now, go back straight down from the glyph through the intelligence here, which will finish activating it, and then over to Combustion. Through Combustion, like so, all the way to the Legendary Node Searing Heat. This is huge. And then we finally use the six points to grab Pyromancy. Plus 20% fire damage. Well, if I get rid of it, you see that this is now on 28% direct damage bonus. And then once it's back, that's an extra 2% multiplicative. Very much worthwhile on top of the actual, you know, extra 20% here. 
then we want to go down from Ashes into the next board, which will be our Frigid Fate Vulnerable board. Arrange it like this, so we go straight right to this Willpower, down to this Dexterity, and then over to the Glyph, where Exploit will be for that extra damage, both to Vulnerable and in general from hitting them. We're all about Vulnerable, both for the mana and the damage, and then head over to Chilling to grab the Dex to power it up, and then straight up through Weakness, round to the usual Frigid Fate. Over to the last board, which we now return to this intelligence to the right of safeguard, straight up into it, and it's going to be your static surge board. Now, if you never want to use raiment, then you don't need to take this board. You can do uh, something like conjuration if you prefer. Basically, this last board exists just to activate another glyph, so do with that what you will. In any case, have it so the mana is in the bottom right here, and go through said extra maximum mana, and then head up to the glyph slot. It is a shame that even though we do have infinite mana, we don't have infinite above 100 mana, so we can't use elementalist aspect in this build, but it doesn't really need it. In any case, up to the glyph, where we will finally get flame feeder for that extra 10% multiplicative, and then activate it with all the nearby decks, and grab incapacitate as we might as well. That then is the full paragon board for you, in all of its fiery glory. That just leaves me with signing off. I am very pleased with this. It's very much on par with the best of the best Sorcerers uh, this season. In fact, Sorcerer has a lot of builds that are essentially as good as each other and tied for the best and get the job done, and you can just choose how you like to play. I think Fireball bouncing along is phenomenal at clearing dungeons, and then perhaps Pure Meteor maybe takes the boss edge, but it's really hard to decide. In any case, it's fantastic, and if you're a big fan of Fireball, yeah, this is the build for you. There's a few left to explore, but please let me know what you would like to see done. I am very much looking forward to Gauntlet and seeing how Sorcerer fares in it and how that ends up developing the class. In any case, for now, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye